There's something about being uncomfortable that makes me feel alive. Hi there. My name is Christian Whittemore, and I was the editor of this film you're watching called Suspended in Space. This film is a short ski slash nature documentary following these two skiers, Kaiza and Celeste. It's almost kind of a follow-up to a film we did last year called Dreaming of a Better Place. I previously had made a little video like this where I kind of break down the edit, show the timeline, and talked about some of the things that we faced along the way. And I thought it'd be good to do another video like that uh, for this film. So without further ado, let's get into it. I want to talk about this film in relation to Dreaming of a Better Place because when I look back on it, I actually kind of think that a lot of things about this film are the opposite of that. Dreaming of a Better Place exists with uh, three really distinct acts. And when we were going to edit this film, this film has a ton of scenes. We didn't really want it to feel like 18 individual scenes though. We wanted almost the entire film feel like one big moment. Almost one continuous scene that you, you kind of exist in. So we're essentially taking you through a day in the life, kind of, of the Yukon. We're showing you the, the sights, the sounds, and some of the inhabitants, too, with the dogs. And then we transition to the evening uh, with this drone shot here. I love doing temp color. It's almost essential for me to buy what I'm trying to sell myself when making a first cut. An important thing to point out in making this whole film kind of uh, almost glide is the way that I want to say it from beginning to end is that we're about a minute in right now without any dialogue in a film that's about six and a half minutes long. We wanted to just rely on the sights and sounds so much and very sparsely use dialogue and when we did choose to use dialogue it was uh, interaction stuff that comes up after this whole scene where they get ready. these really candid moments that we captured from GoPros that were mounted on them or microphones that were mounted while they skied. And that resulted for something that just uh, felt really, really, really natural. A fun W for me is that the opening hook is almost completely unchanged from the first cut. Me and Cameron, we, we, we looked at the first edit and we were like, you know, we have bigger fish to fry, specifically with scenes like like the action stuff, which I'll talk about. Um, but, but other scenes like the opening, we were just kind of uh, happy with right off the bat. So, so things like this had a few frames scooched here and there. I'll give the first edit version a play for you here. Yeah, and this is, I want to kind of keep letting it play for a second. Uh, some of these things, it's not like I just hopped into the edit and got a lot of stuff right. It, like, we have conversations before we go in and we know like, oh, we need to use this giant, amazing cliff bomb here. But there's also some other things where, you know, stuff like this shot, I just fell in love with this the first day I was cutting. I fell in love with this shot the first day I was cutting and, and those persisted through the end. The keen-eyed of you, realize that I'm cutting in Resolve. And it's got a lot of really nice touches. It's got uh, definitely some issues, but every software has issues. You just learn to adapt to it. I mentioned that because one of the cool things that I was having fun with with Resolve is just being able to implement a couple of e ideas into the edit much sooner than you might be able to in other programs. It's like a shot like this, I've added sort of a, uh, a camera shake that's just a plug-in built-in right into Resolve. And stuff like that just kind of helps me sell to the rest of the team the, the the power that we want this scene to exude uh and just little touches like that like adding a, a camera shake giving giving everything that sort of texture really early on kind of informs everyone okay we know the scene in sound of course needs to sound even crazier now to match this this added visual flourish 
So the big uh, struggle, I suppose, of the movie was in this sequence right here, the first action sequence. I'm just gonna let this sequence play from the first edit here. So this is where things get different. Uh, because what I learned from Dreaming of a Better Place is that you start on your most crazy profile uh, ski shot right here. And this is our one. This is the, the one that kind of matches uh, the other crazy uh, tracking shot that we had from Dreaming. And so I was like, oh, of course we just we hop into that. Um, and I mean, you know, it doesn't like suck, I guess. It doesn't suck, it's just, uh, Cameron and I looked at it and we're like, okay, how can we, how can we switch this up? And the ski section, we had a couple of different looks for that. We had amazing drone shots like this. We had some on the ground shots like this. I was trying to figure out the best way to intertwine those. And we kind of went through some rinse and repeat struggles as I show here. We were looking at this shot, this amazing cliff bomb. After the first couple edits, we're like, dang, are we like, are we giving it all away too quickly? Should we save that for our our final, the big finale ski section? Is that what should kick it off? And so that's what we tried kind of halfway through the process. And it definitely wasn't a bad idea. I mean, you can judge for yourself. Okay, cause this last dropping in five, four, three, two, one. We tried it out down here and we're like, well, it's an amazing shot. We just felt like the first section wasn't hitting nearly as hard going into this like super narrow kind of shot of them. And so we were kind of struggling here. And what we ended up with was was going back to starting off on this shot because it's just an amazing way to, to enter the world of action. I just want to scrub through and show you a few moments from the first edit that were, were cool, but ultimately didn't really make it because they didn't need to make it. We found other shots that really just communicated the story better, but there's things like this that are like really cool shots of these like these sled dogs here doing their thing. We we realized we didn't really need three shots for these guys, um, but we ended up cutting it and just keeping this part of it and then showing a uh, kind of dramatic uh, paw shot in the final film. This is one of those that like I really wish did make it into the film. It's it's fun. It's dramatic. It's epic but it's one of those darlings that we kind of had to kill in the end. Because while it's just an amazing shot as itself, it's one of those shots that we would put in the film and we'd be looking at it and be like, you know, it just doesn't feel as right as, as these other shots we have here. Which is unfortunate, but it's just one of those that, that kind of gets chopped along the way. Well, anyway, that's the edit. This whole thing right here. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see ya.